Explaining, describing, showing our dogs, protection dogs, compared to the rest of the world. And the prices and market value for the dogs and the differences between our dogs and everybody else's dogs for the money. Okay? So, I've been harping on, at least for the last four videos about dogs being sold for anywhere from let's say 50,000 because the industry goes generally 50,000, 65,000, 85,000, 100,000, 150,000 up to 150, okay? And I was showing a Doberman that was sold for $150,000 that all he does is just bounce on a leash and go crazy <laughs> right with no control no discipline chaos <laughs> And is considered a fully trained elite protection dog okay and that's what the world is believing that that's what a protection dog is and the dog was sold for hundred fifty thousand dollars okay so and even if it sold for 50 65 85 all this bouncing on a leash is unacceptable again it's beginner stuff baby stuff <laughs> not a controlled protection dog let's put it that way so I've been saying in the videos that anybody can handle my dogs that I build okay that I will never sell anybody a dog that bounces on a leash and pulls and goes crazy with his teeth and all that right that to me is not a trained dog Okay, so I will never sell that kind of dog. Not for 10,000, 15, 50, 70, 100, 150, doesn't matter. It will never leave my facility being that way because that's an untrained dog to me. That's a day one beginner dog. So I was showing how controlled and disciplined our dogs are that anybody can handle them. Men, women, children. What you doing, little boy? Okay, because they do not go crazy on a leash when you go watch them and they go crazy, right? That owner of that Doberman has young teenage girls, okay? And they better pray that those girls, if they're ever walking with that Doberman somewhere, never needs that dog. Because if they do, you know those girls are going to be scared to turn that dog on. Because that's going to be a lot of dog to try to hold back. All right? So, <laughs> you know that in those particular cases, they're going to be thinking, oh my God, do I have to turn them on? 
And even if two of the girls were holding on at the same time, they're going for a ride. They're probably going to crash into each other, fall on the floor, go for a ride on the concrete. That dog's going to pull them all over the place. Okay? If they have to turn him on and try to use him to protect them. That just doesn't work functionally. That's just not acceptable. Okay? So again, saying that anybody, and I use children as an example because I showed women doing it. Examples of if you are in a wheelchair, right? It's the same thing. And here, show you a client of mine doing it with their eight-year-old grandson, right? With these two Malawas. This is the way it's supposed to be, okay? So if the, the child is doing everything, he's giving the commands to these dogs, telling them to watch. When he does, they start barking and alert, stay with him. No chaos, the, the boy doesn't have to hold on to the dog and try to control it, because that would never happen, right? That would be a disaster. So the dog would pretty much be useless, because there's no way that child would be able to hold a leash or anything with that dog if they turn them on, okay? So here in these clips here, you'll see the boy just tell him, watch, the dog starts barking at the person. Send the dog from him to go revere, bark and hold, which is to go to the person, hold them where they are, not to come any closer, bark at them, and if they move, the dog will bite. Send the dog to attack instead of a bark and hold. The threat is a little too much, so now we're going to put an end to it, and the boy will send the dog to actually do an attack, okay, on command. Watch! Oh, that's all you got. That's all you got. You got. Stop! Oh. Oh. And then all the moving around that the boy's doing, a little shuffling backwards, sideways, hits the floor.
backwards, the boy does, shuffling over to the side, scooting around, the dog stays with him. You know, and trying to explain to people, because it's always been this thing, ah, I don't need the dog to walk backwards, I don't need him to circle, I don't need him to stay with, right? Yeah, you do. You just don't understand it. But yes, you do. So people always say, all right, that's fancy, hocus-pocus, movie magic nonsense. N doesn't apply to real life. Okay? And nothing could be further from the truth. And again, I said all the time, I don't do anything that's not functional. I'm not going to focus on anything that doesn't work in real life. That includes obedience, tracking, whatever it's going to be. I am not doing it unless it applies to real life scenarios. So, if the boy chose to leave that area, right, to try to escape this person, he could have. He could just walk backwards, walk away, and get himself out further and further and further. The dog would just stay with him, following him. He's not gonna, the dog's not going to go chaotic, bouncing all over the place, and just take off and go bite the person. Okay, so notice that as well, that the dogs are so controlled that you know they all protection dogs, right? They would love to leave that body and go bite. They're not going to do it though. They're holding back that impulse because of discipline. Understanding the game of control. Hold themselves in control mentally, right? So that we don't have chaos. We don't have an accident happen. The dog doesn't go and bite the wrong person, right? This is why all this control stuff is so important. Let's say that somebody was walking up to the boy or any child and was actually trying to help the child, right? Are you lost or are you okay? Do you need help? And they were coming up. And the child accidentally, like just out of cure, you know, panic, turns the dog on, right? Because he doesn't know, they don't know that person. And the person's intentions are good, right? We don't need the dog blasting off and going to bite somebody for no reason, right? Just because the child doesn't know. So that's why we do not like that exploding on a leash and going crazy into chaos, right? At all. It's not good stuff at all. I know the world loves it. That's what they know is protection. So, yes, this is why we have all these skills that the public again has shunned and thought very little of, not realizing that these are the highest level skilled dogs in the world, right? And that again, anybody, including women, children, eight-year-old, could have been a six-year-old, five-year-old, handicapped person, disabled person, whatever it is, can control and handle our dogs, okay? Most of the other dogs out there that the companies are selling, nobody can handle. But men, right, that, can, that are strong enough to handle those kind of dogs when they turn them on. So, just wanted to show you an example of a young boy in my system being able to control these dogs with no issue whatsoever beautifully done and that is the way a protection dog should be what you doing little boy